Theories of Intelligence. So today we are going to consider the different kinds of theories of intelligence beginning with Charles Spearman. Charles Spearman lived between the period of 1863 to 1945. He came up with a concept called the G-factor. So he believed that an individual when they perform in different intelligence tests say it's a verbal intelligence test or a performance intelligence test when a person does really well in a verbal intelligence test he may also do really well in a performance intelligence test that could be because of the underlying general intelligence which is nothing but the G factor he believed that different items on different tests measures a common factor which is nothing but a general intelligence he believed that this general intelligence can be expressed as a single number which is called as an IQ. He also believed that this general intelligence is something that underlies all of the other mental abilities. He also came up with a concept called as the S factor. So S factor pertains to specific ability. For example, a mathematics professor's specific ability in mathematics would be an S factor, whereas your ability in mathematics for example your basic arithmetic skills your basic addition your basic subtractions all of that is your g factor but however you may not have an s factor for mathematics but a mathematics student or a mathematics professor may have an s factor for mathematics the next theory we're going to look at is lewis l thurston's theory lewis l thurston lived between the period of 1887 to 1955 he was an american psychologist he believed that intelligence comprised of seven different primary mental abilities so these different abilities were word fluency number ability verbal comprehension memory reasoning spatial relations and perceptual speed so he believed that intelligence was a pattern of these different mental abilities so his approach was more or less like david Bechler's approach next we're gonna look at howard earl gardner howard earl gardner was born in the year 1943 and is currently living in america so he was interested in studying individuals rather than just mere tests so when he was observing brain damaged patients he noticed that these individuals though they had a lot of issues in the way the brain was functioning and there was brain damage he still noticed that they had certain mental abilities that was paired within them so he believed that each and every individual had a certain kind of intelligence and intelligence is not a unitary aspect and it involved multiple aspects to it so he came up with a concept called multiple intelligence and he did not believe in the concept of iq so he defined intelligence as the ability to solve problems or to create products that are valued within one or more cultural settings so the different types of intelligence that he came up with was linguistic intelligence wherein it's your ability to use language your ability to form you know beautiful sentences poems stories all of that deals with linguistic intelligence a person high on this could be a poet could be a songwriter could be a storyteller a person high on spatial intelligence would be a person who is able to you know understand objects mentally with, with without even you know really seeing them in space for example a chess player is able to visually you know mentally move objects though he before he makes makes his turn in the chess board so that is spatial intelligence so they could be chess players they could be pilots they could be sculptors then you come to naturalistic intelligence your ability to relate to nature and understand the nature around you you could be a botanist a zoologist so that's naturalistic intelligence then you look at musical intelligence your ability to comprehend and compose music you could be a person who is a music composer a musician wherein you have skills in different uh, instruments like a guitar or a violin then you have something called as bodily kinesthetic intelligence intelligence your ability to coordinate and regulate bodily movements so you if you, in a very skillful manner so you could be an athlete you could be a dancer so that's bodily kinesthetic intelligence then you have logical mathematical intelligence wherein you are an individual who is able to analyze the situations around you in a very logical manner you're able to critically analyze different situations you're able to make hypotheses for different researches so that is more logical and uh, um, logical mathematical intelligence 
intelligence so people high on this could be mathematicians uh, statistician they could be researchers so all of that comes under the logical mathematical then you have something called as interpersonal intelligence interpersonal intelligence talks about your ability to relate to one another and your ability to understand how another person feels so generally people high on this intelligence are said to be counselors psychologists doctors so that's interpersonal intelligence then you have intrapersonal intelligence wherein you're able to understand yourself your strengths your weaknesses so you could be a philosopher or you could be a psychologist so that is with regards to God Gardner's theory however Gardner's theory was kind of criticized because many people felt that they are just mere skills and not necessarily intelligence so that was one major criticism with regards to Howard Gardner's multiple intelligence theory then we are looking at Robert J. Sternberg. So he was born in the year 1949 and is currently in America. He came up with the concept of the triarchic theory of intelligence. He also called it successful intelligence. So it is called as a triarchic theory because it has three different components to it. So beginning with analytical or competential intelligence so with regards to analytical or competential intelligence this is an individual who's able to critically analyze things they are individuals who can think abstractly they are able to process information in a very critical manner or in a very analytical manner they are basically book smarts so these individuals could be lecturers professors mathematicians statisticians so all of that is analytical or competential intelligence the next thing is creative or experiential intelligence. Creative or experiential intelligence deals with an individual's ability to deal with new situations. They are, they are people who could generate new ideas. They are people who could relate to totally different unrelated facts. So they are basically individuals who love exploring and they are people who can use cognitive skills in a very divergent manner. So these individuals could be scientists, inventors, music directors, film directors, all of that comes under the creative experiential end then we are looking at the practical or contextual intelligence practical or contextual intelligence talks about how an individual is able to adapt effectively to the environment he or she is living in so these individuals know whom to target and come up or they know how to climb the climb up the ladder in their offices or in their career successfully they are individuals who know how to get success the easy way so they are are typically street smarts so practical or contextual intelligence is sometimes used effectively by marketers and businessmen and sometimes used maladaptively even by people who do who, who do who are into serial killing or because they easily charm and escape even after a murder and they could be people who easily deceive others so that is with regards to practical or contextual intelligence the next theory we're going to look at is Joy Paul Guilford's theory. Joy Paul Guilford lived between the period of 1897 to 1987. So he proposed the model of intellect. It initially comprised of five into four into six, uh, which is 120 different me mental abilities. But later on, he added two more factors to it. And afterwards, he added another two more factors to it. And finally, it is six into five into six, which is 180 intellectual capacities. But however, don't be worried. You don't have to study all of these 180 different intellectual capacities. Can you see the symbol? It is multiplication. So it is 6 into 5 into 6 so it is 6 into 5 into 6 factors so these 6 into 5 into 6 factors came into three dimensions beginning with cognitions uh, which is operational uh, intelligence which is dealing with your intellectual processes so operations are cognitions memory divergent production convergent production evaluation so cognition deals with how you're able to understand and discern memory deals with your encoding storage and retrieval divergent production is your ability to move uh, and think divergently rather than thinking in singular or unitary manners your ability to think beyond the box come up with a lot of solutions convergent is on the other hand trying to bring down to a single you know solution evaluation is how best you're able to judge situations around you operations so these are your operations operations are basically your mental processes that happens in the brain 
then there is something called as contents contents are the areas of application areas where these operations are actually applied are called contents so these operations can be applied in figural wherein you can apply it in nonverbal or in pictorial form uh, it could be tones it could be pictures then it could be semantic wherein you're trying to make sense of words it could be symbolic wherein there are just inanimate objects or there are alphabets or numbers that you're trying to make sense of it could be behavioral wherein you're try just trying to make sense of observable behaviors then you have something called as products products are basically your outcomes your outcomes of Applying your operations to the contents will give you a product. It could be a unit, a unit could be a single item outcome, a class, it could be a set of items that share similar attributes, it could be a relationship wherein you're trying to make connections between two or more items, it could be a system wherein you're trying to have an organization of different items put together like a sentence or a phrase, it could be a transformation wherein you're gonna entirely change an how an attribute looks or or how an item looks like it could be implication wherein you're making accurate predictions so basically your operations are applied to your contents and then your contents give you something called as products for example say your operation used is memory and the symbol here is e say you say you see an e and you're asked to identify what is it so you you recognize that it's an english alphabet and a vowel of the english alphabet so it's in it's a single unit product that you have brought just by looking at the symbol e so it's based on your operation of memory so that is to do with joy paul guilford's theory so he believed that like this every day in our life we tend to use different operations on different contexts and derive varied products if we are able to do this effectively guilford coined it as intelligence then comes raymond kettle and john horn's theory of intelligence Raymond Kettle and John Horn came up with two different concepts of intelligence which is called as a Kettle and Horn's theory. The first one is fluid intelligence. Fluid intelligence talks about how intelligence is innate or biologically and genetically determined it is not influenced by education or training it aids in understanding and adjusting to the situational demands around you and it also tends to develop fully by adolescence so that is your fluid intelligence and then he spoke about crystallized intelligence wherein crystallized intelligence talks about how intelligence is something that is learned or acquired capacity over the years it can be influenced by environment that is education or training it has skills it deals with skills in dealing with daily affairs like how to you know make sure a machine is working when it's broken down or how to ensure a relationship is settled down when there is a lot of strife so all of that deals with crystallized intelligence and he believed that crystallized intelligence was something that continues throughout your lifespan he also came up with a with the idea that fluid and crystallized intelligence though they look unitary in nature they seem to be interrelated the next theory that we are going to consider is Arthur Robert Jensen's theory of intelligence, also called as the Jensen's theory of intelligence. Jensen was born in America and he was an educational psychologist. So he believed that intelligence comprised of two different types of learning ability or intelligent intellectual ability which is called as the associative ability wherein it deals with basic mental processes like learning identifying your ability to reproduce learn learn concepts and he believed that associative ability is related to biological maturation so depending upon brain maturation your basic ability is to be able to identify objects your basic ability to learn all of that tends to mature over the years next comes the cognitive ability he believed that cognitive ability comprised of higher order thinking wherein it's reasoning analyzing problem solving and he believed that cognitive ability depends on education and training the culture you're in the environment that you're in the stimulation around you all of that comprised of your cognitive ability so thus he proposed these two the these two different concepts with regards to intelligence and he believed that individuals tended to have these two abilities that cumulatively contribute to an individual's iq score so here we come to an end of this whole concept of theories of intelligence. 
I hope you all enjoyed it and you've understood all the theories. In case you have any doubts, kindly feel free to notify. Thank you.